Hey, so we, I guess, didn't just see. <laughs> Actually, a couple weeks ago, we saw we uh, an early train. screening. Yeah, How to uh, Train to Dragon 3. But um, you had to go on vacation. I had to go on so vacation. So you couldn't so record could, it then. Couldn't record it in time. Uh, but well, now but, it's but two, two weeks later, and I've forgotten everything. <laughs> well, no, but it's coming out this week, so I mean, so it works out okay. So now I have to see it again. Uh, it, it, I want to see this again. Uh, this, uh, so. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh, I I enjoyed it. I didn't realize you were in the camp of like, no, I really want to see this again. No, no, no. Okay, when we saw it, we saw it on a normal screen, uh, no 3D, no IMAX, and the greatest 3D movie I've ever seen is How to Train Your Dragon. I saw it on IMAX, I saw it on 3D, it was the best 3D experience I ever had. So, and we saw two in 3D, but it, but it wasn't IMAX, and that really does make a difference. So, if they release this on IMAX, which, shit, they might not, because of Battle Angel, it's like, damn it. Uh, but but if, if you can see it in 3D, I haven't seen this one in 3D, I'm assuming it's going to be great, because the other two were great. If you can see it in IMAX, definitely do that. Uh, so, yeah, this is the third film. I'll give you a background what we thought of the other two. Um, I liked the first one a lot. I didn't... Even though it's like a run-of-the-mill story, it's done so well. The first one was one of the biggest animated film surprises I can remember. Yeah, next to like Kung Fu Panda, I, I think. I saw it on a whim. So my wife was pissed off because her university team lost, and she's like, we need to go. I need to see a movie. <laughs> now, there was like nothing showing, and I'm like, well, you look like you need cheering up. Let's just watch this animated movie. And I had seen the trailers, and the trailers looked It didn't look like much, yeah. Terrible. Um, and came out of that film, and we both looked at each other, and I'm like, why was that so good? And why was that one of the best 3D movies I've ever seen? And then the second one came out, uh, also really good. Um, it, it changed it up a little bit. Uh, it still had beautiful animation. Um, but it is one of those when I think back, I'm like, yeah, I remember a couple things that happened, some of the visuals, but if you were to tell me in order what happened, I probably couldn't. But it's like, I still remember it being really good, and the characters are charming and, and really likable. Yeah, no, that's the biggest part. And, and just this guy who looks like the penguin going, Aah! like a really weak, lame villain. Yeah, um, I wasn't a huge fan of the villain there. Yeah, that, that, that was probably the biggest problem with it, but everything else was pretty good. Uh, no, and they, that, were, they were both good. <laughs> yeah, and, and so we, we really like uh, uh, the first two. And now we have this third one, uh, which. I'd be shocked if they make another one after this. Uh, they better not. I don't know if they're going to Toy Story for it, but... Uh, I'm already pissed off about Toy Story. What they're, they're doing, doing, that, doing so. it like this is the final. They do a Return of the King end credit sequence. Yeah. It's like, remember this moment? Remember this moment? So it really feels As like a, a side note, the by the one. way, the trailers for Toy Story 4 before this movie that we saw... Are not giving me any confidence. It looks awful. That was, but most Pixar trailers look really, bad. Really, really bad. But most Pixar trailers are bad. So oh. there's that. But it um. does not look good. Uh, but but that, that that's a sidetrack. Uh, <coughs> this movie, uh, my general thought is that the, this is a this is a good movie, a good ending. Uh, it, it, the animation, no, I, the ending, is I, really I actually love the ending the most. I was yeah. just like, wow. Well, I mean, as a film, like it's a good, you know. Yeah, it, but I mean, finish. even the ending to this movie. Really, I'm yeah, just like, you knew they, they knew right where to end it. Like it just, I'm like, God, that felt so perfect. Like so, boom. So, so, so here's the thing. So this movie, it, it's a, it's a well done movie. It's one of those you ever watch a film and they're like, oh yeah, that's kind of weird that that happened, but okay, whatever. It's like a nitpick. You kind of look past it. This one I found looking back, there, it's like yeah, they're, it's, they're just nitpicks, but there are a lot of them, and they do kind of get in the way for me for say like yeah, this was really like a great finishing film. I can't say like it's great, but it has really great things in it. And as a thing compiled together, it's like, this is good. And like I said, I want to see it again, especially in 3D. Um, but I feel like seeing it again, I'm going to notice the, the odd little things that kind of stood out about it. Did, did you have the same reaction? Because we actually didn't talk about it that much. <clears throat> there were a lot of odd little things. Um, the, the comedy's hit and miss. Hmm. Um, I uh, the, the villain's kind of hit and miss where i'm just like I, I the character design is strange i honestly thought Count for chocolate a, you mean <laughs> yeah I, I honestly thought for a second that he was going to be voiced by christopher walken because he looks like if you stretched his face out if you bit. took christopher walken and brad was talking about this too combined him with judge frollo from hunchback of notre dame and yeah mix him with a touch of count chocula and like the and critic from ratatouille yeah, or i was gonna say and the bad guy from um dr strange I forget that actor's oh, name. Oh, that dude, but yeah. I yeah. actually thought he was voicing him. Yeah, yeah like, um, 
and then squished them all together and you get like this guy. So it, 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 what's so funny though is he is technically the, in my opinion, the best villain we've had because he is yeah. so charming and he's kind of cool and he's sleek. He's very and, but, well put together. But if you were to say like, what's you know what motivates him to do what he does? It's like I can tell you, but it, it it's kind of dumb. Yeah. <laughs> it's we kind of a weak way, backstory. Yeah, we didn't get much in the way of backstory like with a, him. A lot that's of always the been the Achilles. They're very Marvel movies in the sense that that's always the Achilles heels of these. Three films has been the villains mm. are not particularly strong. Even I feel the like ones. a lot of the motivation, it's like it's there, but it's not great. Like, like the romance in this, you know, but between a Hiccup and the, what's her name? I can't remember uh, the girl's name, but uh, you, you see it develop over the films. And then here it's like, okay, they're kind of together, but they don't really. There's one scene where they're kind of fake, you know, wrestling. Tee hee ha ha. And then that's kind of it. Like, the connection between him and his mother. I was saying his dead father actually does more parenting in this than the living mother. Um, so, okay, I'll disagree with the first part. I thought the romance was fine. I, yeah, okay. thought, I thought they were adorable together. Um, mm -hmm. The mother is a great... I was talking to my wife about this. I'm like, it's really clear that they wrote this mother character in movie two, killed the father, and then suddenly realized in movie three... We don't know what to do with this person. Yeah. Like, because they set this up as this badass character, and then they, they must have realized instinctually, like, we have to have Hiccup's wife. She's got to be badass. She's like, you know, so I feel like they boosted her character and brought down the mother character so that it, it's... Which I'm is fine, fine, but, but she it, still it definitely should be a character. It, it she should be a mother. Yeah, it definitely, you can tell where it's just like, Man, they they didn't know where to go with yeah. that kid. They wrote themselves into a corner and like, crap, because we really should make it about these two getting married. That um, there's which I'm fine with because I feel like that's been developing over time. I'm like, yeah, no, if you're gonna sacrifice something, it needs to be that. We've had parenting in the first two movies. Like, we don't need it a third time. If you gotta sacrifice something, I'm okay with them sacrificing that. It is weird. The the technicals of the story about why they do some things, again, it's not, like, awful or super distracting, but it's, like, just enough. Like, they're gonna... This bad guy's got... This bad guy comes in with, like, a couple dangerous dragons. They're not even, like, big ones. They're dangerous ones. But they literally have an island of dragons. And they're like, we gotta get out of here because this guy, he's really sleek and he's really dangerous and he's not gonna... And so they just move, like, the whole island of people away and I'm like well, well that's a little odd and the motivation is that this other army just kind of wants to take down the dragons or they want to own land they're not developed very well we just know there's that's a lot my, of them and it's really big that's and my then, biggest problem and, and the, when world, so, the world building it kind of takes a step back yeah particularly where the villains are concerned because I'm just always like but if you have all these dragons why can't you defend their, defend yourself it's like oh well they got better dragons and like i'm like well what is what are these people is it just because they're freeing the dragons that why i take them out and, Wait, which and, technically if you want to get really technical that's always kind of the thing like in the first film too with like the alpha dragon stuff which is also kind of confusing and it's even more confusing here honestly because then there's this thing about toothless being well, that, the alpha yeah. of this group but now it's and like always, he's the alpha of all dragons i, I always i always like that concept too because like but he can't get a have, mate we have to save alpha and all the other dragons by killing this really big dragon yeah <laughs> and like, and it kind of gets even more confusing but there's like this. this weird like animal like save the animals message in the first movie and yet i'm just like but you have to kill an animal then i'm like this is yeah weird. So, I, so there's more you know, of that and, and it leads to a climax that it's again not at all a bad climax but it's i mean they're building them you see this army that's like five return of the king armies on the sea and they're all coming and stuff and it's actually a very tiny small scale climax I compared to what it could have was been so grateful for that but I'm but, like, but so, why build it up like that? so though? many marvel movies so many animated films and they, they these climaxes just get bigger and bigger and i like that it had this like Wrath of Khan thing where it's just but like why not build two it up dragons, like one villain, Th one that's guy. That's fine. But but why not make it look like this is what you're going to get? Why build up one thing unless you're going to do something well, really clever with it? It was basically happening in the background. It just focused more on Hiccup and the villain. Is um, it? I didn't even notice. I thought it was mostly just on like this one dock or harbor or whatever with this one ship. And, and like so there is other stuff going on. I thought going they on? were freeing dragons. I, it did, I don't know. That just didn't bother me. I liked the low key like because um, I'm just I, it's just I'm coming to a point with a lot of these movies, where these climaxes are so huge, they're getting very samey. Well, so I'm just like, you know what? Two dragons and 
one of them like keeps getting possessed and stuff. I was enjoying watching those two fight it out versus just like a giant stock CGI battle. Hmm. Um, now, now here's what I was going to ask because I noticed this early on, especially because we saw the Lego Movie two after this. And Lego Movie two is very fast. It's just like the first one where the action is super quick and they throw a lot at you. Uh, this one, it almost seemed like it's impressive because they try to shoot it in one shot and it's definitely well put together. But it seems slower compared to other anime films. And what I'm wondering is if you got the same idea I did, did they slow it down to make it feel like, well, these are characters with actual weight, and when they jump, you want to feel like they're actually jumping? Absolutely. Which is why I liked this film, I think, more than, like, I've been watching some of the other reviewers, and they're like, eh. I was just like, I felt way more invested in this movie and the way they were trying to grow these characters. So I didn't... It was very hiccup-centric in the second one, and then his dad and his mom comes in, but... I was getting sick of just, like, his band of idiots that he surrounds himself with that just only seem to get into trouble. Mm. I felt they were, with the with the exception of one who gives away their location, she's an idiot. I, I thought they were at least, they may still be kind of goofy, but they were more useful in this. Like, yeah, oh, they're, you're, you're they're actually... They're all still idiots, but they do you're shit. You're all yeah. doing shit in this third film. And there were, like, scenes where people just talk. And, like, there's, like, this exposition scene where he's, like, drawing in the sand and he's, like, I'm trying to figure out what to do and I don't know what to do and, like, I've got a rule that I'm just, like, I can't believe it because I've, and I've always complained about the voice <laughs> of Hiccup, which I always get used to every time, mm, so yeah. in the end I'm fine, but I'm, like, Frank Island has this kind of voice, like, this third film in particular, I'm, like, wow, I can't believe it. I really feel like this guy's grown as a character. I feel like most yeah. of them have grown as a character that we've moved from point A to point B to point C. Ex to the except in the humor department. <laughs> now, the humor's always been... It's, it, it, it's, it's, a, one, but... it's a little more... Well, no, because, like, and this, when, it's, it's when long... it's miss here, it's weird miss. Like, some hits are good. Like, I like when they have, they have this prisoner that won't shut up, and you can tell it was just improv like she's making shit up and i thought that was pretty funny but then there's like a weird running joke where like one of the kids i guess they're not kids anymore but but like one of the younger guys has like the hot i i think for hiccup's mom like is that what they were doing i think yeah he's constantly trying to, <laughs> at first i thought oh she must be this high authority like he's trying mm -hmm. to suck up to her but then it's like oh no i i guess like he has the hots for her but it's like for I something that's supposed to be really funny, you could have developed that I a just little more and made it funnier. I just don't care. Yeah. Just I, because it's like, if my biggest problem is a few jokes don't land, but the rest of the movie like takes itself kind of seriously and grows the characters in a way that... Yeah, and, and that's why this does work. I don't see, like... God, I'm going to get shit for this. Okay, like, okay. I like the Toy Story trilogy a lot. They do develop the characters. I don't feel they're really insanely developed, though. I feel like, yeah, you're still Buzz Lightyear. You're still... I don't feel much of a sense of progression except for accepting the fatalistic, you know, end that eventually Andy's not going to want to play with you. Like, Well, that's always what it is. You have to accept this inevitable yeah. conclusion. That's what um, every movie is. The characters don't evolve that much to me. No, I, I know what you're what saying. the first movie did. Woody this in one, Toy Story 3 is still Woody in Toy Story 1. This one, I do not recognize this hiccup from movie 1. Mm. I just don't. And I was just watching movie 1 again the other day, and I'm just like... They actually develop this character, and most of the characters in it, like a couple of his idiot sidekicks, maybe not, so most of the characters in it have actually really developed. Mm. And I'm just like, if you told me that the one solid trilogy of animated films outside of Toy Story that was going to have a complete story arc that develops its characters beginning to end and it's pretty convincing is How to Train Your Dragon? I would also argue, no DreamWorks, I would argue uh, Kung Fu Panda. Um, and, and, and I think he does take some leaves there too. The only the only thing about Kung Fu Panda is I, I the second one's my favorite and I love the first one a lot. I do not hate the third one at all. Don't like don't but hate. That's not me. like a big leap like the other. Uh, no, ones. it's just I kind of just forget about. It. Mm. <laughs> it's I don't want to say it's the Iron Man two because that movie's legit bad, but there is kind of a quality of just like yeah that happened and I don't really remember anything about it. Like I remember the, How to Train Your Dragon all three of them more than Kung Fu Panda, where I remember the first two really, really well. I remember when there's a and development the one, in And the each third one, movie. I'm like, that's good. That's when, all right. When but. a development happens, it feels like, oh, wow, the character in mm. movie three would have done something very different than the one in movie one. Yeah. You know, I, I just it, feel like there's, nice. there's been a real complete story arc here, and I'm like, 
Where do you see that in well, animated films? First, it's it's rare that you get like three in a row, but it's just like even in the DreamWorks, like you got like your Shreks and stuff, which kind of feel like one offs. Like, ah, we'll develop a little, but it, it's still yeah. No, like, where there actually is a continue, like they legitimately grow up. Yeah, and. Uh, I thought that, like, for as much as some of the humor doesn't land, I thought it was such a great accomplishment that I take this kid seriously. Even with that voice, I'm like, no, he's trying his best to actually save his people and, like, put something together. And he's got a and great... And listen to what people are he's saying got a, different yeah, points of he's view. He's got a great support group with his, his quote-unquote future wife, <laughs> fiance or whatever, and his, his mother and then the other villagers. And it... I don't know. I was like, I was way more wrapped into it than I ever thought I was going to be. I was like, wow, you really went, you really went all in. Well, and my favorite to try bit, to tell an actual complete story and wrap it up. My favorite bit that shows kind of both evolving, still learning lessons, but also being funny. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, it's in the trailer. Uh, a toothless comes across this uh, this other was it night. Wing? Night uh, Fury? Not Night Fury, yeah, a Light Fury. Um, yeah, this one's a Light Fury. Yes. And, uh, and, 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 <laughs> I thought and for a second they were going to call it a White Fury, but that probably doesn't have a good connotation. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> I was going to call it a White Fury, but it just sounds like some hate group. <laughs> <laughs> so they have, um, uh, uh, so, so he, they're, they're, Hiccup's trying to help him, mm. you know, get along with this, uh, uh, Light Fury. And I'm glad it isn't just the whole film is nothing but trying to impress her and he screws up. Like, like no, you, but it made you for legit a great see them scene in the Yeah, no, no, no. They, they legit grow. But you see, like, he's gonna be off. And it's, again, about him letting go. And Hiccup turns into this very paranoid parent about Toothless. And he's I just like, I just that. don't trust her. I don't. I, I mean, why isn't he back yet? I, I told him to be back by his time, and he's not. And that's something this that's fucking both... heartbreaker Yoko Ono <laughs> bitch comes out of nowhere and is trying to steal my bro. <laughs> that, that's really funny. Yeah. Uh, it shows him still learning, which I like. Mm -hmm. It's not like he has everything figured out. And you see him come to a conclusion with that as well. So well, it's a character that not only has evolved, but is still evolving and is doing it in a, a funny and, and interesting been, way. This has been an actual theme throughout the whole series, which is another thing where the series has consistent themes, which I think all three of them, in a way, are about letting go. Mm. First one's about letting go of your prejudices, your your hatred, like embracing new ideas. Second one, he loses his father. Um, you know, and this one, it's about letting go of Toothless uh, and along with leaving your home. Mm. Um, it... I don't know. I was really surprised. I think my, my favorite thing, and it's been my favorite thing in all of them, is that damn dragon. Because yeah, it's... it is, it's like if you crossed a, a cat with a lizard with a puppy mm. and a bat, and they they all work flawlessly together. Yeah. They they've actually, <clears throat> and I get cat probably most I get that out the most of it. Too. I think most people um, do. Cat, but the, but it's definitely more bouncier. There's a puppy like aspect mm -hmm. to it too. Um, they they combined it so flawlessly. It is its own thing, though. You see. A little bit of everything. You see a little bit of cat, a little bit of puppy, a little bit of bat, little... And, like, that was my favorite scenes is when he was trying to impress the other, the the Light Fury, and, like, the, the stupid sounds he would make and the way they were, like, doing this weird mating ritual flirting dance. Yeah. I, and I thought it was adorable, and I thought they, the animators... God, all credit to them. They have a real keen sense of animal movements and instincts. Uh, I'll we, one up that. The uh, backgrounds in this, half the time, I'm like... I'm just looking at a real background. Even the oh. people walking, I'm like, I'm looking at real people until they turn around and you see they have cartoony faces, biggest, but like the textures on them thing. just look totally real. Biggest thing, and this is going to sound insane, but this is for animation geeks. So in, in every one of these CGI, yeah, whenever every one of these CGI movies, there's always something new that they they tend to tackle. I, I, I know fur was really big for Monsters, Inc., the... The hair was really big and, and brave. The, the lighting and underwater effects, Finding Dory and stuff. I, I don't know why. In this one, sand. Sand looks amazing in this. It this, looks 100% I, real. On, I honestly, when he's drawing <laughs> things exactly in the sand, what I just about. was like, did they just really shoot that on a beach? I'm like, no, that's particle effects. That, I'm like, they're getting good. Like the sand effects. We're talking about this. drawing a line in the sand. Yeah. Cross this line. You do not. I, and it's such a small thing to notice, but I, I just uh, remember yeah. turning to you and I'm like, that just looks amazing. I know it's just sand, but, and it's always a little things like people it's harsh improve. Of course, and it gets everywhere. Yeah. I hate sand. I <laughs> hate it. You're like water. <laughs> but um, yeah, so uh, all credit to the animators just 
for the sand, but also just the way they draw these dragons. The, the Knight and Light Fury in particular, the others have a, a goofy quality. They're meant to look goofy. They're the side characters. But those two dragons in particular, the animators just outdid themselves. And this one, I think, in particular, with looking and feeling like real animals. Mm. I honestly thought, I'm like, if these things exist, of course this is how they would act. It just felt real. They moved it, the, the sound design, the, the sounds on them. Oh, he does a little bounce, like, <gasps> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the whole world, I'm so impressed for stories that are so, like you said, just see past prejudice, and it's kind of like a liar reveal story in the first one, then just another, I mean, these are such stock stories but the way they're done it's the same people who did Lilo and Stitch and it's the same thing that's such a stock story but the way it's done and the world it creates and these characters it creates I mean it just really feels like kind of a real play like this place could exist even though it looks very cartoony and very goofy and in this one like they look more and more realistic and more you know I guess as the films grow up the style kind of grows up too it gets more and I more mature looking. I realize watching it that I was going to get something more like Lord of the Rings where you feel like everybody has a character arc and you watched one complete whole set yeah. I thought when they were going to do sequels, I'm like, whatever, it's going to be another one-off, and, you know, it, it's not going to really advance the story much. They're just going to do it for a cash grab, and they didn't, and I'm super impressed by it. Um, it, it is the reason why some of the, the humor and some of the world building not making a ton of sense is problematic. I don't like that. But yeah, because, because it seems to build in each one. This one kind yeah. of takes a step back. But the stuff that they really do well, like you said, a lot of the characters do come a long way. Uh, it, it does feel like a, a legit ending and the characters are still learning things mm -hmm. while they still remember the things they've learned before they don't regress uh, uh or, or digress i should what's regress um but De what, what devolve what devolve yeah i'll say that a much better word um De evil but but you know it, when i saw Re the, regress i think that's what uh, okay so i was right okay uh but when we get to um when we get to the end because like i said i saw the the climax of this i'm like oh well, it's kind of kind of hoping for a little bit more of emotional powerhouse but the emotional powerhouse is right after the climax yes. and it is so well done and the particularly all of uh, the emotional powerhouse scenes have nothing to do with the action in this movie yeah that's the interesting thing and i think that's why i like it more than some people because i'm just so a lot of the like we've gone into such an epic movie making mode where it's like we have to have the big action scene and the big action scene will mean mm. something and it's all about poses and this and that and and the one-liners and stuff every yeah. weighty moment in this film is way softer and quieter, and I'm like, I don't see that much. That there's one I just, legit I don't, scene I, I don't. In, in the climax where I'm like, that that matched perfectly, and again, mm. without giving too much away, it's with a character falling. And uh, I thought the way they tied in not just the action, but also what we know about the characters mm. and what they're learning, evolving, and stuff, and the way that... Uh, came to a resolution, like, like, that was really solid. And kind of from there on, the movie is kind of flawless in that it knows now what to give you, what what you're going to deliver, how, how to wrap this up. And uh, I feel like there's one scene in particular I just thought when I saw it, again, I'm like, fight mad tears! Like, like this was really tough. It, I, I, I won't give it away, but it's a scene with a hand. And uh, it, it's a... Uh, it's something similar to what happens in the first movie, and I thought that was so freaking brilliant and, and such a good callback uh, that I said, okay, this really feels like we've been on like this big journey. And even though it hasn't been like perfect, yeah. you know, there's things that you know, like I said, a little miss. <laughs> the misses are not major, in my opinion. Uh, they're, they're little misses, and when sometimes made... they add up. But man, you just feel like you've been through a really big journey. This is, this is the thing that people don't understand. I think people thump on critics too much, or when they're just like, why can't you just enjoy the movie? Why did you point out things you don't like? I have always said, if you've made a good movie, you don't care about the missteps. Mm. You can absolutely see them and point them out. I got a hundred missteps in this movie I can point out. But when you've made an actual good movie, those missteps don't matter. They're, yeah, they're just they, missteps. They matter so much less. It's, uh, yeah, it, it's like eating a perfect hamburger but oh there's like a small piece of the bun missing it's like oh well still good yeah like <laughs> you know and that's definitely this movie when you make a bad movie that also has missteps and it may have even less missteps in a movie like you this. notice them more you notice it more you know so. but but you get you get the the most important stuff to get right they get right uh, the animation is gorgeous that the world they travel to eventually is unbelievable uh 
I'm gonna assume the 3D is really good, even though I guess I haven't seen it yet in 3D, uh, but I really want to. Um, the characters have really come, you know, it, it, it's not even like necessarily coming full circle. I feel like they have really gone on a path and it's a path that both kind of ends but kind of continues too. So, so it's just really, really uh, good there. Um, and yeah, it's like the stuff they nail, they just nail so good and so well. I, and I am so grateful they did not give him a beard for the whole movie. <laughs> that would have I When I, saw, <laughs> that voice, when I yeah. saw the trailers, I was just like, oh no. Because it's like he's got that beard and then, and then that voice. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to be able to take it. And like, they saved that for the very end. And honestly, it was perfect. That ending was just flawless. So. It's one, I don't know whether or not to feel sorry for that dude or if I should just shut the hell up. Because I'm with you. Every time I hear that voice, I'm like, oh man. But I always warm up to it. He... Uh, if the movie is good, like Sorcerer's Apprentice, it's not gonna be good. But like with these movies, with Man Seeking uh, Woman, which he's very, very funny in, uh, he just he does act very well, and he is uh, he does have good comedic timing, and he can do drama very well. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so I feel like every time I'm like, oh, that's a shame he has that voice. It's like, but he always works with it, and, and he always kind of makes it his own, and that's so a part of his identity now. Uh, and, and he's made it work. Now, when it doesn't work, that's where it's mm -hmm. really, really tough, you know, because it's like, oh man. But when he when it does work with a good director, good writer, and, and just good acting. Uh, it's like he really does uh, come into his own. I think that really, really, you get something uh, surprisingly very effective. I always get used to it. Like the first yeah. five minutes, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. And yeah. then by the end of it, I'm like, no, I like Hiccup. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the ending, God, I can't, it, it's so long since I've thought of a perfect animated film ending. But, like, that, that one, I was just like, just perfect like mm -hmm. i i wouldn't change a thing i thought and that's why i'm just like end just just stop yeah. stop don't do how to do. train your it's dragon like... for it was that was the perfect ending it felt right it brought a smile to my face getting all misty eyed and, and you know it's about letting go and like just 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 do it yeah so um i think you get the, the general idea there, there are a lot of little things but i mean but that's the key they are little things i think the big stuff that you're supposed to care about supposed to get really invested in uh feeling like this is uh uh the, the end of a trilogy you get the closure you get the characters that have come a long way animation is gorgeous uh it, it's still creative as well some of these worlds just look unbelievable uh and i like watching them it's it that's the stuff that matters, and it really, really hits it uh, right on the ball. And even though it had a really shitty title, The Hidden World, that just is the most generic thing. You know, <laughs> like, we, we haven't seen, we saw this, what, two The Hidden ago? World. We saw this like two Thor, weeks ago. like Thor, The Dark World. We, we saw this two <laughs> weeks ago, and as soon as I pushed record, I was about to say the title, I'm like, I have no idea what this is called. <laughs> I just said, How to Train Your Dragon 3, go we back, you'll see. The Hidden World. <clears throat> and I'm just like, oh, yeah, I, I mean, that... But even that's kind of a thing, like, finding the hidden world it is not really what the movie's about. The movie is about... It really is about closure. Yeah. Uh, and, and it does it very, very well. So, um, yeah, a anything else? The hidden world think? is a metaphor for all of our hearts. That's really <laughs> what you're going to go out on? <laughs> no, I, uh, I got nothing. I just, I really liked the movie. And uh, I'm not saying it's perfect, but the things that it did right, I... Thought it was way worth it, and I know, like, some people out there just kind of, like, in the blog, kind of like, eh, it's all right, and I'm just like, I, I disagree. I really I, enjoyed I, it. I, I was kind of there, too, until we got to the ending. I the saw, ending saw, I, saw, I, saw what it, well, I saw what everything was doing, and even though it didn't all work, I'm like, okay, no, this this is solid. This is a good movie to go out on um you know it, but but it's okay to acknowledge it does get other little things wrong well, it's okay to acknowledge whatever you whatever you think of it obviously but um yeah i i mean it, it's definitely not perfect i mean none of them are uh but it, what it hits i think it really hits uh hits strong so uh yeah that's about it and we'll see you probably at uh at least I will. We'll see, we'll see if we can do Battle Angel. We gotta catch up on that because uh, we're at, again. I was out of town for that. So uh, uh, yeah, hopefully that'll be the next one, and I'll see you next time. Later.